Welcome to the next video on multiple linear regression in R. What we're gonna talk about today is with categorical variables. This will be the first one of categorical variables. There'll be another one in the next video, so just hang on if you're trying to work through these. All right, so what we have here first is a little bit of math in order to understand where we're gonna go with this. Once you see where we're gonna go with it, then it'll make more sense when we start to program it and try to get some interesting things out of R because R will actually do some of this. We just have to know what R is doing in order to make sense of it, okay? So let's put up a little bit of math and we'll get moving here. So if you recall, we have simple linear regression. It's an equation of a line. We have Y, we have beta zero and beta one. So we have an intercept and a slope and we have our predictor and we have some air around it, right? Everything doesn't line perfectly up on the line, so we miss it. So this is how much we miss it by. Um, now, usually we get nice continuous or numeric variables, and those are easy to work with, but what if this doesn't work so well? So let's look at this data. Okay, so here's some data. Is it linear regression data? Yeah, it looks like I have lines there versus line. So that looks like there's more than one, and we need to be able to think about how could I model this, especially if this differences are attributed to a variable that I've collected. Like, I know that one is one group and one is the other group. Now, I could fit the line separately, but why? I can actually do all of this with one regression line uh, and one regression statement, which uh, makes this kind of fun that we can actually pull this off. So if I tried to use the line of best fit, which is uh, the linear regression, notice it doesn't look so good. It actually misses the data totally. And this is what we're trying to avoid. So what we can do is if we know the groupings and we have collected this data, what we can do is create an indicator variable and R will actually create these for us. We just have to be able to discern what we're looking at and what is one and what is zero. And when we get more categorical variables or variables that have more categories, things will get more complicated. But this is the simple one right now. So we can dichotomize it into one or zero. But, and then we can take this variable and add it to our linear regression. So here we've done a, um, we just took our linear regression. We added in X2. X2 is good or bad. And what it does is it changes the model, right? Because if it's good, then X2 is one. If this is one, then that means it just moves it over there. So I get beta zero plus beta two, which is a shift in the intercept. But notice that the slopes beta one and beta one are identical for either good parts or bad parts. And if I run this model, this is what it looks like. It looks like I ran two separate regression lines. However, these are have exactly the same slope, so they're, they're parallel. And that makes, uh, we need to pay attention to this because that makes a big difference when we're defining these things. Notice that it just shifted the intercept up. There's a shift at the intercept here, up. Okay, now, what if our data looks like this? Now, this one's a little bit different in the sense that it looks like they have different slopes as well. So if you put in the line of best fit, which seems to be a good idea, right? Everybody just slap a line through it, see what happens. This doesn't work so well. So what we can do is we can add in X2 and we can add in the product of X1 with X2 into the multiple linear regression model, end up with beta zero, beta one, beta two, beta three, and this multiplication term or this interaction term, however you wanna call it. Now, this allows us to change the model even more, right? Because if X2 is equal to one, now I have beta three and beta one defining the slope and beta two and beta zero defining the intercept. See, that's why these group together like this, just doing a little bit of algebra, putting in ones and zeros. And then I have a line here, that's our standard line uh, for the bad group. Now, notice it adds a shift to the intercept. The intercepts aren't the same nor are the slopes. And if I were to run this model, this is the picture I get. And that looks pretty daggone good. Now, of course, I colored them differently uh, just to make it easier to see, but this is actually run with one model. I didn't run two separate regression lines. 
This was fit with using one statement in R, one regression line, and allows us to do these sorts of things. Now, this is what I'm after today, or in this video. We'll actually see how to do it in R uh, a little bit better, and we'll look at how to handle categories that are more than just two, because that becomes an issue as well, because often there's more than one category. All right, so we're gonna save that to the next video, but uh, this should get you rolling and understanding what we're gonna be doing from here on out in the next couple videos. See you in the next video.